Hello everyone, Jeff here with a discussion of correlation between assets and diversification. Correlation is related to how closely stocks move in relation to each other. And in this graph we have an example of the price of Union Pacific Railroad, shown with the red line, and CSX Corp, which is a railroad, shown by the blue line. And since they are both railroads, it probably doesn't surprise you that their stock prices move together very closely. Uh, in fact, this is about as close as you will see two stocks moving together in the real world. So as far as correlation is concerned, we would say that these two stocks are positively correlated. There is definitely a relationship between the price of one stock and the price of the other, and that relationship is positive, meaning they're moving the same direction. They're extremely, extremely similar. So um, positive correlation, almost perfect positive correlation. Let's think about what that means in terms of a diversified portfolio. If you were to put these two things together, you would not get any diversification. We can see that CSX, the blue line, has a certain level of risk that you can sort of measure by how much it goes up and down. Um, the uh, red line here, Union Pacific, has the same amount of risk approximately. And if we were to put them together, you can imagine an average of these two lines. It would just go right between them. It would also practically be the same thing. It would have still the same level of risk. So it doesn't really matter if you have all of one stock, all of the other, or some mix of both. When we mix them both together, you end up with the same thing essentially no change in risk no change in expected return you've done nothing so when we put positively correlated highly positively correlated stocks together you do not get diversification here is a very different example the blue line here is a um, stock mutual fund and the red line here is a long-term government bond mutual fund um, they are also correlated, which can be a little confusing, because correlated just means there is a relationship between the two prices, and there is one here. The relationship, though, happens to be that they the two prices move opposite each other. So moving opposite each other is still a relationship. So these two uh, assets are highly correlated, but they are highly negatively correlated. So there is a relationship, but it is a negative one, an inverse one, you might say. So let's think, of, uh, let me just say a little bit more um, about why that is. You'll notice we have this period here where the bond fund is going up while the stock fund is going down. Then we have the stock fund going up while the bond fund is going down. And then we have up and down. Um, here we have a period where all this is up and that's kind of flat. But then again, we have up and down. You can see the point here, up and down. So negative correlation is what that's showing. If we were to put these two assets together, a stock fund and a bond fund, you will get diversification. Uh, so again, we can sort of measure the risk here by how much this line is jumping up and down. So up and down and up and down and so on. And the blue one as well has a certain level of risk. It actually has a higher level of risk. You can see it's moving more up and down as we go along. If we were to put these two things together, you can envision the average of them, and I'll throw a line, I'll try to throw a line in the middle of here. If we were to have a portfolio of half of one of these things and half of the other, when you average them together, you are going to get this sort of thing. This is an estimation, of course. But what you'll notice about this line is it is extremely steady. Um, the red line goes up and down. Uh, the blue line goes up and down. When you put them together, you end up with something that doesn't move all that much, except for a steady, mostly increase. Um, so the um, thing to remember here, when we put together negatively correlated assets, which these definitely are, you end up with a portfolio that has substantially less risk than the individual assets that you put into the portfolio.